What we're gonna talk about today is how I, as a six-figure eBay seller, take photos really, really quickly of used clothing items to resell online. What's going on guys, my name's Sebastian, this is Resell Junkie. If you're new here, my wife and I, we sell used stuff online and we teach others how to do it. This video is part of our six-figure eBay resale course, so if you are interested in that, it's gonna be in the link below. But what we're talking about today is how to take photos really, really fast and have a process and just be really repetitive with it so it's second nature. I want you guys to become robotic with this because the faster you can do this, the more money you can make. Because in reselling, every single second you spend is more profit that you're losing. So the faster we can get at photos, processing, listing, shipping, all that good stuff, the more money we can all make. Guys, real quick too, before we get started, if this video is helpful, hitting that like button really, really helps our channel grow. And then if you're new here, we would love for you to subscribe. If you like money, if you like eBay, if you like hustling in general. So clearly right now the studio behind me, like it looks cool, but it's not set up for eBay. There's nothing I can do. But in just about two minutes, I transformed this space into a real legit photo studio. So I'm gonna show you guys that. I'm gonna describe everything we use for this process. And then, yeah, let's take a few photos and see what it looks like. Okay, just so you guys have like a bird's eye perspective of what the back end looks like. There's lights shooting on me. There's my table. There's some inventory I'm gonna shoot and there's my light that you were just seeing me record on, and that's where the camera was sitting on that tripod. Great, and I actually have my laptop in my hand because I am super ghetto and recording like this. So what we're gonna do now is show you how we go from this really cool photo studio setup for video into a eBay setup, so let's get into it. So this is the setup. That's how we transform from going from like a video and like work office station to a full fledged studio. Now let's start with the paper. The paper is just a roll of four foot white paper, seamless roll from Amazon. I think it costs like 30 bucks or something like that. The newer single roll holder is holding it up. They make it in the single roll. They also make it in the triple roll in case you want more colors for whatever reason, but it works really well. We just clearly mounted it to the wall. It looks a little bit ghetto right now because I'm out of paper. I don't want to buy new paper because we're moving. So I'm going to make this do for the next month. So that's why you see like tape holding it up and stuff like that. But this is by far the best way in my opinion to set up a small studio somewhere. On that note though, you saw me rolling the table back into the other one. This is really, really critical because this actually gives us the shooting space that we need to lay out garments like pants and you know jackets and things like that. If we were to just do it on the main back desk, there's no room. There's literally, it wouldn't work unless we were hanging stuff on the wall, but I don't like to do that. We used to hang stuff. We used to do all the, I've tried every single method. I like the lay flat method just for overall ease of sake for pretty much everything we do. It's just so much simpler in my opinion than hanging some things and laying some things flat. I just like to lay them all flat and quickly take photos, which you guys will see in a few minutes. You also saw me put all of these clothes, which you probably can't see in the video on this chair. Now you can put a table there, you can do whatever you want there, but just have your inventory ready to go at arm's reach. So the main point of this is to literally just be able to stand here, take a photo, reach, plop it down, throw it down over there into the other tote, and just not move so much. If you have to move 20 feet to grab your item and then 20 feet to put it down, and guys, you need to simplify it. Your workspace should be like a 10 foot radius at the absolute most. Make it compact, make it tight, and work around your space. This is the simplest way and the fastest way to do this. You saw the tote on the ground, I'll show you that in a second again, but I have that there ready to go, so when I do photograph this, I just throw it in the tote and it's done. I take the tote downstairs, I'll inventory things, and boom. Now, going over here, the laptop is on a stand, but it's also on another stand. Guys, this is something I've never, ever, ever heard from another reseller is ergonomics. No one talks about their back. No one talks about the longevity of this. I do not want you guys hunching over like this and just like doing all that stuff. It's so bad for you. I have a bad back at 29 years old, so please, please, please take this part very seriously. I don't care what ergonomics cost you. Spend all the money on the world on it. There's a reason I have a $1,000 office chair, which I didn't pay that much for it. I'm not crazy. I got a really good deal on it. 
but there's a reason office chairs cost a thousand dollars and there's a reason ergonomics are important so please if you take anything from this video forget the photo stuff forget all of that worry about your back ergonomics is cool now you see the lights these are newer 660 led panels they're bicolor, so they can be both white and yellow typically when i'm shooting video i'll cast a little bit more yellow on my face just so i don't look like like a ghost right because i'm pretty pale um, but they're both newer 660s you saw one of them looked kind of more obstructive than that one over there it's because i built a custom soft box which is literally just a lampshade from the thrift store that i paid three bucks for and then i put a diffuser cloth over it now again that's usually my key light for video so i like to soften the light up a little bit and for the newer 660 panels they don't make like a proper soft box it would be like 40 to 50 bucks and it still wouldn't be the right thing so I just made my own and it works just the same. Now for this purpose, diffusing the light isn't so critical because again, these are just eBay photos. It's not like I'm taking modeling headshots or anything like that, but I still do keep the diffuser on there just to eliminate some shadows. And then also in the beginning of this, you saw me winding the desk down. This main desk that I use as my workstation is a Husky 72 inch work table from Home Depot. They have different sizes of these, I think starting at like 54 inches or something like that. It's the one that Cheyenne has upstairs. It is an awesome table. We love these things. And for under $300, I cannot suggest a better table than these Huskies. It's not an affiliate thing. We don't have any codes for them. I just truly, truly, truly love these tables, whether it's for a garage space or whether it's for an office like this. In my opinion, you will not find a better adjusting table for the price point. So Husky tables at Home Depot, two thumbs up. Now that we've talked about the gear and the setup, let's go behind the camera and see what's really happening here. All right, so for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be using my iPhone. I always take photos on the camera that's actually shooting, but again, it's taking the video right now, so I don't have octopus hands. What we're gonna do really is just show you the back end on the phone. I'm gonna be screen recording this, so you're gonna see what I'm doing up close, all that good stuff. But again, I would be using my camera. I highly suggest using a real camera. It's just, for me, it's faster. I like the process of it. Now listen, your phone will work totally fine for this. You do not need to go out and buy a fancy camera. There is absolutely no need for that. I personally like using the camera because I find it a little bit faster. I like the photo quality a little bit better. And I also like the bokeh or the blur that it gives me on some photos. But again, the phone will work totally fine, especially if you have anything past like an iPhone 8. You will take absolutely splendid pictures. So don't worry too much about that. Now what we're gonna do is we have this Ralph Lauren shirt lined up here. For something like this, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna just wanna lay it out as flat as possible, as cleanly as possible, and eliminate all the wrinkles. Now, I do not iron my stuff. I don't do that. You can do whatever you want. But for dress shirts, usually I'll take the cuff, I'll kind of just fold it over like this. And then if it's like a jacket and it has a pocket right here, I'll typically insert the uh, shirt sleeve into the pocket just to show the customer. If it's a button down shirt, you want to just leave the collar open so it looks a little bit cleaner there. You're going to take a wide shot right there, obviously, of the main front. Typically on a dress shirt, I'll always go into the cuff, take a photo just to show the condition and also the style of cuff. You have to remember there's different styles of uh, shirt cuffs. Then with this, since it does have a logo, I'll go like this, take a photo of that. And then this one, since it's a button down collar, which that's really important to know, this is a button down shirt, but this is a button down collar. So remember that guys, I'll take a photo of that just because again, guys are very particular about that. Now, this shirt is in great condition. There's no stains, but if there were stains, I would clearly photograph those. Then I'll typically just pull it down to myself. I'll open up the collar, take a photo of the tag, and now if the fabric composition isn't here, it may be on the back of the tag, which is not. So in this case, I would open up this shirt and find the fabric composition tag, which is right here. So take a photo of that because people do really like to know what fabrics your shirts are. And then I just flip her over. Let's see if I could do this with one hand, this is fun. And then take a photo like this. Now in this, you may see like the uh, end of the desk there. It doesn't really matter. I can crop it out later. It's not a big deal. So we have this done. Now all I do is chuck it in there and I move on to the next thing. So boom, another shirt. I'll pop it down. Same exact thing. Now the laptop is here because just in case while I'm processing things and I see damage or anything like that, I use a spreadsheet, which I'll show you guys in a second. 
and I'll document any sort of issues or flaws I may have missed in the first processing of this. And then again, I would just run through the whole pile of stuff. Now we're not gonna go through you know, 30 items right now, it just wouldn't make sense, but that's it. That's all I do, it's really not that hard but just create little stations for yourself and have everything organized with whatever works for your space. I have a lot of space right here. I'm very, very fortunate. I'm very grateful for it. But again, some of your spaces may not be this large. A few processes will adapt to any sort of space. These are very critical processes. Having things set up in one pile that are ready to shoot, having your ergonomics set up, and then having a pile of stuff that's been processed. It's just a basic, simple workflow from start to finish. Don't overthink it. Do it as fast as possible and just make it your own. And guys, have some fun with your space. Like this space is creative for several different reasons, but a big reason is because it inspires me. It makes me actually wanna work here. And when this space was set up in the garage, I never wanted to be down there because Cheyenne and Oliver were up here. I was sad and I was alone. And guess what? It's winter time. It was negative nine degrees yesterday in Colorado. And there's no way I'd be taking photos down there. But I'm up here. You can probably see my fireplace over there. It's super cozy. It's, it's nice being up here. It's great filming video. So make your own space, make it fun, make it cute, spend some money on it. It's totally fine. It doesn't have to be like this stale work environment. No, have some personality, add a little bit of pizzazz and have fun. But now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the spreadsheet I actually use and just kind of the methodology of that process. And that's how we'll end this video. So this is gonna be what I see on the back end of the computer. If you guys do want the spreadsheet, I'll link for it below. You can download it and you can use it if you want and you can adapt it to your own preferences. So let's hop into the computer. All right, so this is how my back end setup looks. I've mentioned this in a video before, but I just wanted to show you guys and just go through this real quick. Item name is gonna be the item title that the item's actually gonna be listed for on eBay. The cost is what I paid for it. Measure is what it measures. The description, you can see this is all blank. I use a generic description for all of my titles. I say good use shape with no major wear or damage. I only fill out the description field if there is something to note of the item, if there's any damages or stains and yada, yada, yada. The weight right here, this says weight, you can't see it, but I put this in because I have a virtual assistant. He does help me. And when he creates shipping labels, he needs to know what items weigh. I also think it's faster and it's just easier in the morning instead of having to weigh everything, it's already pre-weighed. Now this custom skew field, it's missing because I need to add the formula. I must have deleted it earlier. But what it would do is it would take the weight, it would take the cost of the item, and then also the storage location. So like bin B1 or B2, whatever. And it calculates it all into the custom SKU. And then I put that into the eBay custom SKU field when I'm doing my listings. This is a really, really simple setup. The way I do it is I literally just copy and paste everything. And if you guys do want to see the video about that, I'll link it up below. But again, really, really simple. Don't overcomplicate this. Make it your own, make it work for your system and your business, but just have some sort of process in place. So guys, I really hope this was helpful. I hope it maybe opened your mind a little bit to how you can get faster, what you can improve, maybe the things you can spend money on to make your day a little bit easier. Spending money on stuff is not a big deal as long as it helps you make more money or makes your life easier in the long run, which all of these things do. This stand cost me 40 bucks, but guess what? It's a solid piece of metal. I love it. It actually brings the laptop to me. I'm six foot two, so I have a lot of issues hunching over and all those things. So just think about little stuff like this, guys. Again, please, it's so important. Your back is so vital. You only have one of them and you do not want to have back pain like I do because I promise you it really sucks. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please smash that like button. And again, if you're new here, consider subscribing. We can become good friends. Why not? As I mentioned earlier, this video is a snippet from our six-figure eBay reselling course. If you're interested on how to get your eBay process started, how to hire help, how to maybe make money in different ways online, it's only $24.99. Go grab it. Go support the channel. Until next time, cheers.